Hi, this video is on applying order of operations, lesson one, two. You should be on page eight right now of your book. First of all, what is order of operations? Mathematicians have established an order of operations to evaluate an expression involving more than one operation. A lot of vocabulary there, think about it. We learned about evaluating an expression in the video yesterday. That means you know, take your number, plug it in the variable, get the answer, involving more than one operation. In other words, if you have to do more than one addition, subtraction, multiplying, or dividing, you have to do it in the right order, okay? So what is the right order is the next question. You might have heard this before, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What does that mean? It means exactly what you see here under key concept. P stands for parentheses. You should always, step one, evaluate expressions inside grouping symbols. So if there's parentheses in the problem, you got to do what's in the parentheses first. You should always evaluate your powers next. That's where the E comes from. Excuse. Excuse means exponents. So that takes us to step two. If you have exponents, that means you got a power, you got to do that next. My dear, multiply, divide. Now you notice the book says multiply and divide from left to right. Do you notice it does not say to multiply first. Any multiplying and dividing you see, you should do it in order from left to right after you've done the grouping symbols and the powers. What's last? Aunt Sally, A-S, add, subtract. The Aunt Sally stands for adding and subtracting. Again, do you notice this, this step four in the book, it doesn't say add first and then subtract second. It says just do all your adding and subtracting from left to right. If you do the problem in this specific order, you'll get to the right answer unless you make a computation error. Let's look at a sample here in the book. Now, this problem, this example, we're going to walk through it together. I want you to notice down here, it says the answer is 3 when you're all done. Okay? Answer is supposed to be 3 right here. So let's see how that happens. So first step, there are no grouping symbols. You notice there's no parentheses. So you go to step 2, which is powers. Are there any exponents in the problem? And you're probably looking and saying, yes, there is. Aha, right here. Okay, so you notice I put a little arrow to it. I got to do that first. 3 squared is 9. So the problem turns into 27 divided by 9 times 2 minus 3. I took care of my powers. I'll put a little check mark next to that. Okay, what's next? I ought to do any multiplying and dividing from left to right. So let's do that. Do you notice there is dividing here and there's multiplying here? I just have to go from left to right. So let's do that. 27 divided by 9 is 3. Now I have the times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So when I do my multiplying and dividing from left to right, I end up with 6 minus 3, which gets me to the fourth step, which is my adding and subtracting. I ought to do 6 minus 3, which equals 3. That's how we're getting to here. Watch what happens if you make one little mistake in order. Suppose I decided to do 27 divided by 3 first. Now, if I do that first, I broke a rule. I didn't do my power before my multiplying and dividing. Well, look what happens if I just did that first. 27 divided by 3 would be 9. Then I would square 9 and get 81. 81 times 2 is 162. Minus 3 is 159. Look at how far off my answer is from the correct answer because I made one little mistake in the order. Okay, you got to do these in the proper four-step order. You have to do anything in parentheses first. That's step one. You got to do anything with exponents second. That's step two. You got to do all the multiplying and dividing in order from left to right. That's step three. You've got to add and subtract in order from left to right. That's step four. If you do it in that order, unless you make a mental math there, you'll have the correct answer. 
Let's talk about grouping symbols. Grouping symbols, like parentheses or brackets, indicate that operations inside the grouping symbols should be performed first. That's key. In other words, if you have parentheses inside of parentheses, you've got to do those things first. Here would be an example, this example C. So you're on page 9. Look at this problem. 20 bracket 30 minus parenthesis 8 plus 13 parenthesis bracket. Do you notice how they are doing the 8 plus 13 first because we have parentheses inside of parentheses basically. You got to do the innermost parentheses first. So 8 plus 13 would come first. That's 21. You notice how I still have parentheses here. I got to do I got to do it in parentheses next. So the next step should be the 30 minus 21, which is 9. And once I get the 31 minus 21 and get 9, my last step would be I have a 2 times 9, that's 18. So I followed the rules of order of operation in doing that. Let's talk about a fraction bar. Fraction bars are very important. Okay, look at what it says here for a fraction bar. You evaluate the numerator and the denominator before you divide. Okay, let's review those words. Numerator is the top of a fraction. I'll just put top. Denominator is the bottom of a fraction. Evaluate the numerator and denominator before you divide. In other words, let me put this in my own words. In other words, do everything on the top first, do everything on the bottom next, you divide last. You've got to follow these rules when you have a fraction bar. A fraction bar is one of those horizontal bars where you see the top and bottom of a fraction. Okay? Let's look at a sample problem where that's happening. Look at down here, number 10 evaluate the expression when y equals 8. So wherever I see y, i got to plug in an 8. So let's go up here and do that. I put 8 in for y on top, and I put 8 in for y on the bottom. So let's follow these rules. Do everything on top first. Well, let's do that. i got to follow the proper order. i got to multiply before I add. So 10 times 8 is 80. 80 plus 1 is 81. I get an 81 on top. Let's do everything on the bottom next. 8 plus 1, that's 9. I'm going to divide last. 81 divided by 9 equals 9. There's the correct answer to that particular problem. We're going to do a couple sample problems from the assignment together right now. When you do the assignment today, you will work down step by step. You notice I didn't say if you feel like it. I didn't say if you want to do it that way. This is how you're going to show your work. This is how any teacher would want to see this type of work shown mathematically step by step down. It shows a, it shows a consistent order that's easy to follow. So let's do problem number 9 on page 10 together. So I'm going to write the problem down. Now let's do the proper order. Are there any parentheses in this problem? Nope. What's next? Well, I've got to take care of powers. Oh, I see an exponent. I've got to do that next. So my next step is to do my power. 2 to the 4th is 16. So I'll write 16 times 4 minus 2 divided by 8. Okay, what's after powers? Well, any multiplying and dividing from left to right. So let's do that. I have that here. i got some multiplying and dividing here and here. Let's do it from left to right. 16 times 4 is 64. 2 divided by 8 is a quarter. If you're not following that, think about it. 2 divided by 8 would be reduced to over 8. It's a quarter. That's why I have a quarter here. 64, 64 minus a quarter, I'm going to do my adding and subtracting less, is 63 and 3 quarter. Can you see how my work is step by step down? Let's do one more. One more sample. Let's do number 18 on page 10. There's the problem. Rule 1, do 
anything in parentheses first. Do you notice how I, how I have parentheses inside of parentheses? That means I better do the 9 minus 5 first. It's inside the innermost parentheses. So I did that. 9 minus 5 is 4. I still have parentheses. I got to do what's in the parentheses. Now, would I subtract or would I do powers next? Now think about the order. Powers always would come before subtraction. So let's do the power. 4 squared, that's 4 times 4 is 16. I still have parentheses. I, I got to do the parentheses. 20 minus 16, that's 4. And now I have my multiplying. 8 times 4, that's 32. That's the end of the video. If you have questions, make sure you are asking.